Hey yo, what is going on guys? Two Studios here. Welcome to my final room video, I think, ever. So this video is just me going over pretty much everything there is to know about Ruin and Security Breach and then what's to come, kind of including VR and FNAF VR 2 because pretty much all that comes together to one to talk about pretty much everything. You'll see down here there's a whole there's a whole bunch of sections. You can you can go to each section if you want to know about something or hear my opinion on something. There'll be a bunch of sections. You can skip to each one if you don't like a section or if you really want to see a section. So when the DLC first got announced, I had like no idea. I, I didn't know what to expect. Because all we got was this poster right here. So the first section and the first thing I want to talk about is the gameplay of Ruin. The gameplay of Ruin. Unlike Security Breach, I think it's very, very, it's, it never really gets stale, okay? Sometimes it can get hard, and sometimes you'll be stuck on, like, some parts, but if you know what you're doing and you know what to do, it doesn't get stale, it's, it just keeps going and going and going, and it isn't very long. That's the next thing about Ruin, is that I feel like Ruin has a perfect amount of content in it, okay? If, I felt like if it had less content in it, it would be bad. If it had more content, it'd be way, it would be bad, okay? Because I don't want it to be as long as Security Breach, but I also, don't, I also don't want it to be as short as like a normal FNAF game. But the one thing that's consistent in each like stage of Security Breach, or chapter we'll call it, is that basically you're getting down to disabling nodes and trying to save Gregory, we'll call it even though it's the mimic, okay? But you're just, each section is basically shutting off nodes and avoiding new, well, old obstacles that look differently new, we'll call it. The next thing I like to talk about is that how much steel will improve from a lot of people's like hates for like certain parts. Like, first of all, there's like no security bots in here at all. And security bots in the original security breach were annoying, like super annoying. Like everywhere you go, every single room, even if it's like a bathroom, there was most likely a security bot in that room and they were so annoying. Or the mop bots, like they're all gone. Like all of them are gone. Even the nightmare bots aren't even there. Everything is destroyed. There is not a singular nightmare bot, nightmare bot. There's not a singular bot active besides the actual animatronics. So while I'm going through this game sec gameplay section, I would like to point out some like main chapters that I loved a lot. Like they're really cool. The first chapter, which I thought that was really cool, was the daycare chapter. So in this chapter, you're just going through the whole entire daycare as a whole. So you go back in the daycare, and the first thing that happens to you is Sun just grabs you. No, know, Moon grabs you. Like, he doesn't let you go. You eventually free from his grasp, but you realize that you have to reboot Moon, or Sun, whatever you want to call it. It's called Eclipse. We have to reboot them because Moon is taking over Sun, and if you don't reboot them, then well, it's just Moon and he's evil. So you have to go around turn on generators in order to blind Moon, so Moon turns into Sun, because obviously you know Moon likes the lights off. So you go around, and I think you have to turn on like three generators, and once you turn on all three generators, you have to make, make your way back to Sun, or Moon, Eclipse, whatever, and reboot him into Sun, so he's like friendly and nice and not evil. This section, this chapter is also the first chapter where we have to use cameras to our advantage. So there's this weird mechanic with the cameras where sometimes areas are blocked off. So you have to access the camera and on certain cameras, there is an object that has some sort of animatronic or some sort of thing that's like on the first camera where it says anomaly detected and you have to quarantine it in order to like have a puzzle to open the area. And this was the first chapter to actually do that. It's a very good mechanic and hard to explain, but you'll see the video on the screen on how like to actually do it. Now the sun room is the sun room. Chapter three is basically just like exploring the daycare and security breach. It's literally the same exact thing, except Moon, you can't really get you. At least I didn't get jump scared by him. So really just be safe, walk around easily. And there's only three generators, which I really like because Back in almost Security Breach, I hated this part so much. Navigating around this whole entire gigantic daycare center while, move, while trying to get away from Moon was like such a maze. It sucked so much, but luckily, like, I got through it. But I like this because they really narrowed down the amount of generators, but there's also a lot more obstacles because everything is in ruin. The next chapter that stuck out to me, and I'm pretty sure this is the longest chapter, is chapter, I think it's six? The one with Bonnie Bull and Phaser Blast. Now, the thing I like about Bonnie Bull in this DLC is they took a character who had literally absolutely no lore behind it and like barely any gameplay like time. 
and put it one of the biggest threats in this DLC. I'm talking about Mini Wind Up Music Man. These little things, which I had no idea there was like 50 of them, are in every single node area. So basically in this, obviously, if you know when you got to this chapter, all you have to do is deactivate nodes, but that's not all you have to do. You have to use the cameras and go to another camera and, and like use your voice to lure the music mans away from that node so you can go, you can go, you know, corrupt it or whatever, decorrupt it. I don't really know how it's called. Now to talk about phaser blast, phaser blast, it's the same exact thing. This part was, there's really only one thing that stuck out to me and I think everybody is gonna know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about phaser blast and DLC. Glamrock Freddy. We found this guy in Phaser Blast, full on just toppled over, just broken. But the one thing that Steel Will knew, and the one thing they tried to hide from us, is they hit his face in the rubble. But the thing is, he has no head. So his his stomach is a freaking mouth. And once you get jump scared, he just chomps you up with the stomach. So this guy is terrifying. He's flat out terrifying. But then when he screams, it's like this like weird like gargled, corrupted scream. I'll play it on the screen right here. That scream is bone chilling. And there's, I remember getting stuck on the part where um, when he like slams down the door and you have to go to the AR inhibitor, but like he is walking towards you. So you have to be super quick, like extremely quick. And then the chase scene between you and Glamrock Freddy is absolutely terrifying. Just hearing him stomping, getting closer and closer and closer while you're running for your life away from him. Now, obviously, the final chapter is obviously the chapter that really, like, was amazing. Because seeing how deep the pit, like, the actual area where we went down, like, in the original game, see how, seeing how deep it's got is so crazy. Like, it's just so deep than we thought it was. Because when we first saw it, all we did was go on an elevator, then go straight, and then go down farther in the sinkhole. No, but we, we go down, like, three tunnels, go through a gigantic Minecraft cave, go through like seven different rooms that look like it should be up at the pizza plex but it's down below like deep in the earth yes overall the gameplay is gotta be like a 9 out of 10 like it just doesn't get stale like there's some parts on security breach where like the gameplay just goes on and on and on it's just it's just like the same exact thing like we'll say in the daycare or something like that in the normal game or like the endos those parts where it's just flat out like it's it's hard but it's also extremely boring where it's just the same thing over and over and over again where it just gets like boring you're doing this for like 30 minutes but security breach didn't have that i mean dlc didn't have that it 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 was faster paced and there wasn't such lingering time on certain sections the only time i really lingered was mainly on monty's catwalks but that was it that was the only thing i lingered on and that was me that wasn't the game Next up, let's go through all, like, the characters in Security Breach and, like, their backstories and if they got more runtime or less runtime and what happened to them. So let me just go over the animatronics who either had, um, like, very short runtimes in the game or were, the, or, were, or were just there to give chase. So there's Glamrock Chica, there's Monty, there's Glamrock Freddy, and then there's Mini Music Man. So those four animatronics really had, like, not very much story much in it besides the last game to be fair glamrock chica and monty mainly glamrock chica hasn't really had very much runtime in the game all those four characters really had nothing to do with them there were barely really much runtime for them or they were or they were just there to add like suspension to make you keep moving you may have realized that i forgot a character that you would initially think that would be on the characters list that is just there to give chase roxanne wolf She's not there to give chase. In this game, she actually has way more story than she did in the last game, and a lot more runtime. So, the main part which I want to talk about is before we go down the sinkhole below Roxy's Raceway, we see her trapped underneath um, a forklift, and we walk up to her and we realize that she's not bad. She is just broken, but she actually knows Cassie personally. So, what I believe is going on here is that. Cassie had a birthday party, and no one showed up to her, except I'm pretty sure they ordered Roxy to, to deliver her cake, or deliver presents or something like that, because they're allowed to do that from this Freddy voice line. A stomach hatch? That place is reserved for oversized birthday cakes and pinatas. It is not a safe play area. Yeah, so so they're allowed to, like, you know, deliver cakes inside their stomachs, or I'm guessing they just ordered Roxy to deliver the cake or something like that. So Roxy was there and no one else was there besides like missing her mother or something like that. 
And so, I'm sure it was just her and Roxy, though. Know, they kind of bonded. Because these animatronics, you know, are super high tech. So they're able to, like, talk to the kids. So, I'm sure they bonded. And I'm sure once Cassie saw Roxy, she knew it was familiar. Because she remembers her from, you know, delivering the presents and cake and talking to her. Now, the next character that got a lot more lore that was, like, super mysterious, but actually got, like, a lot more light shine on it was Glamrock Bonnie. So, we learned about Glamrock Bonnie in this DLC. We learned that, well, once you go after Chapter 2 to get to, get to Chapter 3, the Monty Catwalks, we go through on Monty's little, like, roller coaster. We see posters or a storyboard on how Monty became part of the band instead of uh, Glamrock Bonnie. So, basically, Monty looked up to them, and Glamrock Bonnie, I believe, just gave him the guitar, because I'm pretty sure they wanted to retire Glamrock Bonnie to make a different, you know, animatronic. So, they retired Glamrock Bonnie, but he was still in the facility, as by this picture. Um, he's still there, you can see, because he's got, still got a green room, so he's obviously still there in the Pizza Flex. He's just in a whole another part of the Pizza Flex. Next up, and what I initially thought to be the bad guy of Ruin, is the MXES the like anomaly or the entity we'll call it if you don't know what the entity is i'll go over a brief description of what the entity is and why it was made so the entity is a manifestation of the mxes a digital security device that confines and regulates the mimic to prevent its escape from the underground level of the pizzaplex designed by gregory and vanessa to keep the mimic from getting out because as if you don't know the mimic is burn trap it's just in a suit. Speaking of the Mimic, Mimic is the main antagonist of Fancy Freddy's Ruin. As we know, as we go through the game, the Mimic, well, which is portrayed as Gregory, but actually it's the Mimic, we find him deep underground, blocked off by a covered up wall by cement, but we break the wall and we set the Mimic free. Now, I'm pretty sure the official ending to uh, Security Breach is actually the ending where Gregory allegedly kills us, because there's just so much more, there's so much evidence backing it up. Because first of all, we hear Roxy after that. We don't hear Roxy after any other ending. Now, you could argue and say that the Scooper ending is the official ending because, you know, it's hiding in a suit like it did in one of the books. But it just, it just, there's so much evidence lining up to the actual end, to the main ending, which is the elevator ending, that. It just doesn't even feel like a fight at, the, at this point. I mean, Gregory gives us so much lore in this ending. He tells us everything. He tells us that we're not supposed to go to the Pizza Flex. It tells us that this thing was deep underground. He tells us that, like, him and Vanessa made this. He tells us everything. So why would he tell us everything if this ending wasn't canon? That doesn't make any sense. Let's go over our main protagonist in this game, which is Cassie. Cassie got a, a distress call from... Gregory in this game to come save him from the pizza flex. but what what I believe happened was actually When Gregory and Vanessa were Luring down the mimic to get inside this room to block him off from actually being able to escape He left something there, which is his Walkie-talkie and the mimic got a hold of it like the mimic did to lure like other people down there to kill him he portrayed himself as Gregory and lured Cassie to come to the Pizza Flex and finally end her life. Let's move on to the lore and theories of Ruin. So the first part I want to talk about in the lore section is I want to go over the lore of the Mimic. A lot of like, a lot of my like lore of the Mimic comes from the Tales of the Pizza Flex story called Nexi. So let me just give you a description of how the Mimic came to be and how it went from, well, an animatronic that's supposed to help people to becoming one of the most murderous and rampage animatronics to ever live in FNAF. Next, a spring trap. So a single dad named Edwin was taking care of his four-year-old son named David after his wife Fiona died giving birth to, well, David. Edwin wanted, wanted to pursue his, like, dream of making robots, animatronics, same thing. But he worked too much and couldn't really keep track of his kid, David, so he made an animatronic called the Mimic. Edwin teaches the Mimic, like, how he entertains his son, David, so it can help David and keep David company while Edwin is at work. One morning, Edwin is calling David over to come eat breakfast, 
but has no response. He goes to check out his factory where he does a lot of his stuff. He's then he sees his factory doors wide open. David was outside playing, uh, playing with the mimic, bouncing a ball back and forth on mimic. But then uh, the ball goes flying out into the street. David runs after it, and the worst happens: he gets hit by the car and is killed instantly. Many weeks later, and Edwin is completely broken. He's lost his wife and he's lost his son. So in return. He sees the mimic and he thinks of his son being killed by it. So he goes on a rampage on the mimic. He's just slamming the frick out of this mimic. He's banging it, smashing it, beating the crap out of it, and just tossing and just beating it down to the ground. He then abandons the factory with the mimic like broken inside of it. Therefore, Fazbear Entertainment claims the factory as its own and uses it for hardware and building stuff inside of it. A while later, Fast Entertainment sends a group of people to go, uh, to go invest investigate and find parts for their animatronics in the factory where uh, Edwin left the mimic inside. The mimic is still, uh, it's still working, it's still moving. But like I said earlier, the mimic mimics everything it sees. So after the mimic saw Edwin beat the ever living crap out of it, guess what it's gonna imitate? It's gonna imitate killing and beating the crap out of it onto other people. Such as this group of investigators trying to investigate everything, it's gonna completely murder them. And that is exactly what it does. But instead of revealing itself, it takes on multiple different costumes, such as the one we saw in the costume ending. It takes on multiple, the multiple different costumes and kills each individual person in its own torturous loving way it wants to so there is still three people left inside of the factory so they come up with a plan that i to try to trap the mimic from keeping it from escaping so they send this guy jace to come lure the mimic inside the storage room while the other two deadbolt the door from the mimic being able to escape um luckily he gets to the vent and tries to escape but he gets stuck falls back down the storage room and gets killed so there's a lot of lore to go over and how the mimic became to be like burn trap and stuff like that. If you want to know everything more, I'll I'll put a video in the description. I'll scroll on the screen here by Daco. He explains everything about the mimic you need to know. I'm not here to talk about the mimic. I'm here to talk about ruin as a whole, but I will do a little bit of section just to talk about the mimic. Basically, towards the end of like how the mimic became trapped, Gregory and Vanessa lured the mimic down. Gregory escaped, but obviously, like I said, left his walkie-talkie while they sealed the room and made the MXCS, the glitch trap anomaly, to keep anybody from getting the mimic free. So I had a theory a couple of days ago, and it turns out it really wasn't true because I didn't know that MXCS was actually like a like anomaly, like not anomaly. I didn't know like the, that glitch trap anomaly was actually like supposed to keep the mimic inside. I thought that that anomaly was glitch trap. Let me go over what my theory was. And I think, excluding the MXCS part, I think it's about right of what's going on. So my original theory, which I came up with like four days ago, which was saying that uh, the anomaly glitch trap in this game wanted to like become an actual like living physical robot, but it couldn't yet. So it had Vanny find animal skeleton, which the only skeleton and which the only animal skeleton was left and found down there was the mimic animal skeleton. So it used the mimic animal skeleton to make burn trap to make the burn trap suit. So then I what my theory was that the MXCS glitch trap tried to hack like the suit to actually get its physical form, but it couldn't, so then it decided to keep it away because they didn't want it to escape. He wanted to be the only killer. That was my original theory, but that was like five days ago until I found out everything about the mimic. So, but I think a part of that is kind of right where like it built, where it kind of made himself Springtrap because like he's following Springtrap's moves. Like I said, watch this video. It explains everything. I'm not about that. I'm talking about Ruin. Now this final second is just going over my final rating on the Ruin DLC and what are my final thoughts on it. So I'm just gonna compile everything together. The gameplay is amazing. I love it. Like I said at the beginning, it never gets stale. It, I don't think it is stale. I think it's amazing. I think Ruin is amazing as a whole. The gameplay, 
just is so fresh it keeps going and it just gives more secrets and makes it more terrifying each like corner it's so dark because it's all ruins so you don't know what i'm going to go against and you don't know what's going to appear out of the blue the lore of this game it, it mainly makes more questions than answers it has more holes than it tries to fill up but it also if there if everything got solved there would be no more games so it's a good thing that there's more questions and it's also a good thing that there's more like lore and more like things to be solved because then there's more stuff in the game, more animatronics to be dealt with, more games, more terrifying jump scares. But my overall rating of the Ruin DLC has got to be a 9 out of 10. It would be a 10 out of 10. There are some things that are keeping it away from a 10 out of 10, like, you know, some things about Gregory that aren't really answered, some things about like the Fredbear ending that is just so confusing. And then, like, we don't get another costume scene and stuff like that. But, like, like I seriously have to explain this. 9 out of 10 is not bad at all. It's amazing. It's freaking astonishing. 9 out of 10 does not mean that 1 out of 10. 9 out of 10 is literally one point away from a 10 out of 10. That is amazing. It's still thing. It's still amazing. It's still good. Just because it's not a 10 out of 10 for me does not mean I don't like it. There's just some things that keep it away from being amazing. But to be fair, nothing in the world is really amazing. Every, but a lot of things in the world are really good and great. This game, this DLC, really showed how decrepit and sinister and terrifying Security Breach can really be. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.